3,500 billion cubic meters globally over the last century. New research from the British Standards Institution, or BSI, warns that, act that without action, 75% of the world's population could be facing drought by 2050. Let's get more on this then from the BSI itself. I talked to Martin Townsend, who is director of their Centre for Excellence for Sustainability, and I asked him for more detail on that staggering uh, statistic that 75% of the world's population could be facing drought by 2050. It's part of a comprehensive piece of research we've just completed. And I think this is the issue that um, in many countries, water is, is very um, uh, prevalent, I suppose, but actually only 1% or less than 1% of our water is actually fresh water. So we do take it for granted. Um, and as you said, the, the numbers are quite sort of um, um, startling, I suppose, in terms of um, if we look at projection in terms of water consumption, yeah. then actually it's going to create a, a, a big challenge for us all. Obviously, right now, we're seeing a huge demand for water because of the wildfires we're seeing. We're just reporting live from Canada earlier in this programme, for example. I know that isn't the fresh water that we can drink, uh, and that's a, that's a different type of water. But the point is, for lots of different reasons, the changing it, climate means demand for water is going up and up, doesn't it? It does. And, and, you know, climate change is one of the factors, but it's not the only factor. So if we look at sort of a growing population, that's placing more demands on our resources. With that sort of growing population, we have economic needs. So we're placing more resources or placing more demands on our resource in terms of food, in terms of manufacturing. And across the world, those stresses and strains are starting to show. And it's now just about being more aware of how precious water is and all of us can play a role in terms of driving down that consumption and, and innovation will become an incredibly important part of that debate as well. I go to global conferences such as the World Economic Forum where they've been talking about this problem for several years now. Yeah. Governments are aware of this, but what's actually being done about it? So it's really interesting, actually. Different countries um, are looking at this in very different ways. So if we look at Germany, uh, they're doing lots of really good work around sort of rainwater harvesting. Um, so making sure that uh, um, individuals can put things in like water butts. Um, innovation in terms of water metering, in terms of compulsory water metering. It's a kind of big issue, I suppose, that um, how do we manage this more effectively? We manage this by measurement, uh, making sure that we understand how much we're consuming. So there's an element here about education. There's an element here about use of technology, making sure we're using all of that to really drive change. And I think when we look across the world, as you've said in the introduction, some of the, the, the big sort of economies have got some real issues here, like America, where we're starting to see, you know, personal consumption being quite high in terms of things like swimming pools, areas of things like leakage as well going up. China, uh, high dependency on things like agriculture. Um, and actually that price of water becomes quite an interesting issue in terms of GDP growth related to water consumption. So across the world, we're seeing uh, different governments and different nations looking at this problem in different ways. And I think it becomes really quite powerful in terms of learning from each other, making sure that we have